Well, hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from around the world. Um, Tim Castleberry, and greetings from Sweden. I haven't shown my face in a long time, so I wanted to, uh, I don't know, show my face. <laughs> so everyone knows I'm alright. It's been a while since I've made any videos, or since I've made any videos where I've um, appeared on the video. I haven't done many live streams, really been kind of waiting for instruction and inspiration and um, here we are so on Facebook I've been um, continuing to do the devotionals and have all the devotionals lined up not so much the way that they were lined up in the videos but it's continued to resonate in a way that is only God can do it, it, it when you have so many coincidences you can only have so many coincidences before it's mathematically impossible and we've had some impossibilities which we know all things are possible through Christ and it's uh, I don't know it makes me happy so if you don't have Facebook don't feel bad I know a lot of you don't have Facebook and don't plan on getting it so no harm no foul I wouldn't recommend it if you haven't already but if you do have a Facebook and you haven't checked out my timeline in a while uh, you'll see that what I've lacked in videos I've made up for in the content to at least have uh, usually two, sometimes three to four devotionals all lined up for the day. So today's devotionals that I posted had today, this evening's um, devotional from the morning and evening devotional book. Uh, I'm going to read yesterday. I was a little sick yesterday. So yesterday, I'm going to read yesterday morning, and I'm going to read uh, this morning's. Today is August 26th, and it's Monday, so happy Monday, everybody. <laughs> and it shouldn't be too long, but I also have a prayer list. I asked for any prayers, uh, prayer requests. <clears throat> if y'all have any, go ahead and feel free to put them in the comments. And uh, I'll add you guys on the next list. So I'm going to start here from... August 25th, the morning, which is yesterday morning. And Mr. Spurgeon wrote this over 100 years ago, which always makes it really cool. And you'll see today's verse of the day is talking, um, I don't remember it off, you know, like to quote the chapter and verse, but the Bible Gateway verse of the day today is talking about the body of Christ and how we're not all the same parts of the body and we all perform different functions as different members of the body and it's super cool way that that verse of the day came out in the devotionals and then in a conversation i had before i even did the devotionals about jesus being the head so if you really want to get double impact then check out the devotional post for today uh, it should be the one before the song and i'm probably going to post this video on facebook so it might be three posts back by the time you get to see this and uh, add what you read there to what we're going to hear now uh, if you want to do some due diligence. Otherwise, just sit back and enjoy some Holy Spirit. So, uh, Father God, we just pray to you right now for your wisdom. We pray for you to open up and unlock your word for us that have ears to hear. We know that faith comes by hearing and it's hearing the word of God. And we know that man and woman does not live off of bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And we do know that the word was made flesh and that that word is the bread of life. So let us feast on this bread of life that is your son Jesus in his body that we are all members of. Let us honor the head of that body and let us glorify our father in spirit and in truth and in that body. Please unify us God and um, break down the barriers that are distracting each and every one of us in our daily lives inside and outside. Help unify us in spirit that we can walk the walk as we talk the talk and that we can all walk uh, the truth. We want to walk in your truth and we want to walk in unison as a functioning body with members that all serve your purposes, Father God. We just bless your name and we bless your son Jesus and we just invite the Holy Spirit to come teach us and comfort us and we uh, invite your son to sup with us. And we just ask for that water of life to be poured out abundantly. God, where we're empty, fill us up. And where we're full, help us to empty our cup so that you can fill it with what it is that you have for us. 
let us remove ourselves so that you may be increased god and we just pray that all things are done according to your will to glorify your name through our lord jesus christ and it's in his precious name and by his blood that we pray amen Oh, heavy. <laughs> All right, so Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 3. It says, His fruit was sweet to my taste. Now, that's the scripture Mr. Spurgeon is going to use to um, anchor to in what he has to say. Now, remember, this, this man wrote this over 100 years ago. And if the spirit of truth wasn't resonating then as it is now, uh, I don't know. Maybe we ought to open up our ear to hear even more. <laughs> So, let this encourage and edify you all in the faith. Mr. Spurgeon said, Faith, in the scripture, is spoken of under the emblem of all senses. It is sight. Look unto me, and be you saved. It is hearing. Hear, and your soul shall live. Faith is smelling. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia. Thy name is as ointment poured forth. Faith is spiritual touch. By this faith, the woman came behind and touched the hem of Christ's garment. And by this, we handle the things of the good word of life. Faith is equally the Spirit's taste. How sweet are thy words to my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my lips. Except a man eat my flesh, saith Christ, and drink my blood, there is no life in him. Wow. I haven't read this devotional yet. And I had no idea when I was just praying about the bread and body and partaking and the water of life. That's the blood and the, the blood to water or water to wine is the man. I'm blown away. <laughs> That's the real communion. We're communing with him right now. Except a man eat my flesh, says Christ, and drink my blood. There's no life in him. What a fellowship. <laughs> This taste is faith in one of its highest operations. One of the first performances of faith is hearing. We hear the voice of God, not with the outward ear alone, but with the inward ear. We hear it as God's word, and we believe it to be so. That is the hearing of faith. Sorry. I can't see what y'all see, so I'm trying to pan it or hold it as best I can. I'm laying on my belly prostrated before the Lord that's so cool I'm still moved by that so we hear the voice of God not with the outward ear alone but with the inward ear we hear it as God's word and we believe it to be so that is the hearing of faith now I just want to point out George in the prayer request prays for uh, some of these things we just spoke about or Mr. Spurgeon spoke about a hundred years ago super crazy I, lost my, I keep losing my place. <laughs> so it says, next we discover... Uh, no, then our mind looks upon the truth as it was presented to us. That is to say, we understand it. We perceive its meaning. That is the seeing of faith. And next we discover its preciousness. We begin to admire it and find how fragrant it is. That is faith in its smell. Then we appropriate the mercies which are prepared for us in Christ, that is faith in its touch. Hence, follow the enjoyments, peace, delight, communion, which are faith in its taste. Any one of these acts of faith is saving. To hear Christ's voice as the sure voice of God in the soul will save us. But that which gives true enjoyment is the aspect of faith wherein Christ, by holy taste, is received into us and made by inward and spiritual apprehension of his sweetness and preciousness to be the food of our souls. It is then we sit under his shadow with great delight and find his fruit sweet to our taste. Man, that went really hard. <laughs> I'm going to continue on uh, because I feel like I interrupted and said a lot there. Keep what you just heard in mind, though, when we finish with the final prayer. Because some of the requests are, like, directly... Well, <laughs> let me just show you. Here's the church. I 
can't really see it, but right there above my fingertip, at the tip top of that tallest tree, there's two towers. Uh, my camera is not good enough, or else you'd see it much better, but super cool. I really like that bell goes off at very particular times, like just now. <clears throat> I kind of look at it as confirmation, but I don't want to read too much into it, so. Some of what was asked for as prayer requests were directly referenced in here. Uh, George in particular will understand. So now for this morning's devotional, even though it's the evening here, it says, and this is for August 26th today, it's from Psalm 111, verse 9, and it says, He has commanded his covenant forever. Mr. Spurgeon, a hundred years ago, for this very day, writes this. So open your ears to hear and get ready for some of that bread. The Lord's people delight in the covenant itself. A covenant is like a contract, contractual agreement. When God makes a covenant, it's more than a promise. Uh, so the Lord's people delight in the covenant itself. Notice the Psalm 111.9 says, He has commanded His covenant forever. So the Lord's people delight in the covenant itself. It is an unfailing source of consolation to them so often as the Holy Spirit leads them in its banqueting house and waves its banner of love. They delight to contemplate the antiquity of that covenant, remembering that before the day star knew its place or planets ran their round, the interests of the saints were made secure in Christ Jesus. It is peculiar... Uh, pe <laughs> this is going to be a tough one. It is peculiar... Peculiar... Peculiarly, peculiarly, it's a hard word to pronounce properly. It's peculiar, <laughs> peculiar, peculiarly, peculiar, peculiar. <laughs> okay, it's peculiarly pleasing to them to remember the sureness of the covenant. We are a peculiar people. Add an ly to peculiar. Peculiarly, it is peculiarly pleasing to them to remember the sureness of the covenant while meditating upon the sure mercies of David. They delight, they delight to celebrate it as signed and sealed and ratified in all things ordered well. It often makes their hearts dilate with joy to think of its immutability. As a covenant which neither time nor eternity, life nor death, shall ever be able to violate. A covenant as old as eternity and as everlasting as the rock of ages. They rejoice also to feast upon the fullness of this covenant, for they see in it all things provided for them. God is their portion, Christ their companion, the Spirit their comforter, earth their lodge and heaven their home. I want to read that again because that was uh, powerful. God is our portion, dear believers. Christ is our companion. The Spirit is our comforter. Earth is our lodge and heaven is our home. It says they, but we could just change it to we see in it, the covenant, an inheritance reserved and entailed to every soul possessing an interest in its ancient and eternal deed of gift. Their eyes sparkled when they saw it as a treasure trove in the Bible, but oh how their souls were gladdened when they saw in the last will and testament of their divine kinsmen that it was bequeathed to them. Uh, bequeathed is like inherited or left behind. So, we have inherited from our divine kinsman, Jesus, what were, um, yeah, so the things that make us glad through that covenant. That's one of the promises, is the inheritance. So, that would make my eyes sparkle. <laughs> Ruby in the eyes that sparkle. Okay, so, oh, but oh, how their souls were gladdened when they saw in the last will and testament of their divine kinsmen that it was bequeathed to them. More especially, it is the pleasure of God's people to contemplate the graciousness of this covenant. They see that the law was made void because it was a covenant of works and depended upon merit, 
but this they perceive to be enduring because grace is the basis, grace the condition, grace the strain, grace the bulwark, grace the foundation, grace the top stone. The covenant is a treasury of wealth, a granary of food, a fountain of life, a storehouse of salvation, a character of peace, and a haven of joy. Man, that... After the things that were in the other devotionals, um, I'm not going to read them, but the evening devotional talks about the difference between Moses and Jesus, and it was a in very interesting comparison, because one of the things it said is that the law repels and Jesus' grace, which are the two covenants, um, the law repels and grace uh, attracts and if you study Romans we wouldn't know what sin was if the law wasn't there to show us and if we were completely obedient we wouldn't have sin to begin with but we're born under sin and therefore we're condemned already right and so until we're reborn in the spirit or born again through Christ and our faith the grace that we receive through faith not works or acts or there's nothing that we can do to receive it it's a free gift of god and so when we accept that it's a free gift and it's the death burial and resurrection of christ which is where the power is when christ died we as um, humans of the flesh died with him and when he resurrected we resurrected with him unto eternal life once you believe that process is a sealed signed and delivered thing just like it said that covenant now is for you too now, when you think about it, though, the law is for the lawless, not for those that uphold the law. God doesn't need a law because he's perfect and good. We need a law because we're imperfect and bad. So, it's kind of commonsensical that, you know, you don't have to have bad things to make perfect perfect. If something that's perfect is self I mean, with God anyways, it's, it's a self-perpetuating. It's only, it takes an outside thing to make the imperfections right and so when god it does reference the scripture in the post from earlier about and um, peter where it talks about the heaven and earth will melt away in a fervent heat to the and even to the elements like everything will be melted away and then when when we're given the hope and promise of new heavens and a new earth it's going to be full of glory and it's going to be without sin and death so to think towards the future of what eternity holds for us, you know, we're going to live in eternity where there is no such thing as sin, and we don't know it. That's a very comforting thought to me to consider because of how corrupt and evil the world is, right? It said that that's, what did it refer to it as? I'll find it quickly. <laughs> Well, it's heaven is our home not here we're here for a time right but i'm not gonna waste time now trying to find that list but it's all it's all centered around grace grace is like receiving something you don't deserve we don't deserve to be forgiven for sin the law and justice demand the penalty be paid the penalty can't be paid oh. <laughs> Okay, the penalty can't be paid by us. Only Christ could have paid the penalty because he's the substitutionary sacrifice. And by his blood, we're healed, right? And we're saved by his sacrifice. So, I just want to finish with that, I guess. Sorry about that. I um, got a phone call I had to take. And I got distracted. So, I think where I left off was finishing up with the comparison that Mr. Spurgeon made earlier in the evening devotional for today, um, that the law, you know, the example he used was Moses coming down with the Ten Commandments, and that when he came down, his face shone with the glory of the Lord to where he had to wear a veil because they, people couldn't look at his face. Um, now, when Jesus was a higher, uh, it's a Jesus's covenant of grace, the new covenant, 
is a higher covenant than the law, right? And we love the law, and we love God's justice, and but we also love His mercy. And it pleases God to do justice. So when we think about it, it, you know, He is the just judge, and He will judge, and He'll judge justly and firm but fair. And it's through Christ that we have the salvation by the grace through faith. So when we consider that the law exposes evil and exposes what it is to be in sin, it tells us what sin is. And nobody wants to be wrong. So when you're convicted by the law, the law is to convict you of sin. And where there is no law, you know, the power of sin is in the law. So... The law is nothing more than where you can be wrong. It doesn't tell you how to be right. And that's why Jesus is, um, summarized all of, of the law and the commandments and the prophets and everything in two statements. Love God with everything you have, mind, body, heart, and soul. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. And in those two things, you cover everything. So the law, it pushes people away. And grace attracts through the love and the beauty and the mercy. Um, the law has no mercy, right? Under the law, everybody's convicted and will be punished. Uh, I mean, I'm talking like, uh, oh man, what do you call it when it's like capital punishment? You know, like the second death is what what is required to atone for the justice that needs to be meted out. So it's only through the capitulation that Jesus was the only worthy Lamb of God. Uh, we have such a consolation in that. I mean, times are tough. Everyone's going through a hard time and we're about to pray for some folk. And just ask and receive if any of these things apply to you or your situation. You know, agree with it for whomever it's for, but also receive it for yourself. Um, Everyone's going through a hard time and we need as much consolation as possible. We need as much uplifting and encouragement and edification and to build things up. We need as much unity as possible, but not at the expense of um, not at the expense of the truth. you know we don't we don't sh you can't sell the truth short, you know like it if you if you take the truth, it's the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help you God. And that's where we are right now in society and in the world is, you know, it's all or nothing. So let him be your all in all and let you and yourself be nothing. Because when you diminish yourself, it gives a lot more room for the spirit to move and it gives a lot more room for God to use you. Uh, be humble, guys. You know, stay humble. <laughs> Don't forget where you came from, but stay humble and, you know, it's meek. The meek will inherit the earth and we have the covenant and the inheritance and all that but i just i want you guys to remember it's the attraction it's the unconditional love that we're to embody and those are the things that <clears throat> pleases god obedience pleases god he would rather us obey than to offer up sacrifices you know and when we, i think about sacrifices i think about you know what a lot of people think matters to god and what they do is really for their own glory vain glory vanity seems to be the number one problem um, pride and vanity and that's probably the root of almost all problems next to the love of money right so when we think about these things we need to be able to look inside ourselves and be honest with integrity because the quicker we get right with God and the quicker we acknowledge what's wrong and we humbly submit ourselves to his will and we ask for his guidance, and we ask for his help, um, it's at that point that we can be helped because we're, we're wanting the help, you know? A lot of times people say they want help, but they're not really wanting to help themselves, and they want God to do it all for them. And from my experience, it doesn't work that way very often. You know, every now and then God will do a great, wonderful thing for his glory and bring about, you know, a very quick outcome and yeah it can grow faith but sometimes god wants us to suffer through it long suffering is one of the characteristics of god's holiness that helps us grow 
in faith and in the spirit, but also it grows our perseverance and it helps us become more battle hardened. Uh, gonna be going into spiritual warfare, um, rounding up a whole bunch of stuff for it, and we're still gonna do Romans and I have all these plans, but I don't know if they're my plans or God's, and that's why I guess I'm waiting uh, for more instruction and inspiration, and when the time is right, we'll know. But let me go ahead and pray us out, and I was going to say, it's not as dark as it appears. So I've got scriptures. Uh, I had the tablet. I didn't get to work on all the things I wanted to. Here's the prayer list. And I don't know, guys, just receive it. You know, Heavenly Father, we just come before you very humbled and very grateful for your mercy and for your tender loving kindness. We ask for your comfort, God, and we ask for you to hold us in your hands. We ask that you keep us and that you bless us. But before you bless us, let us bless you first, God. Let us lift up your name on high because you're the most high God. And let us exalt your son, the only worthy sacrifice, that without your son, there would be no reconciliation. And Father, I just love you for the opportunity to be reconciled and to come into that inheritance through the adoption. God, thank you for electing and selecting me Thank you for growing the faith inside that grace may abound. God, and thank you for forgiving me of my sins, that when my sin abounds, your grace abounds even more. Help me to not continue on in sin, and when I do know that I'm sinning, help me to acknowledge it swiftly and to repent immediately. Help me to wash my hands to make them clean, and help me to be having a cleaner heart, God. Help me to be more loving as you are. Help me to love like you do. And God, I just want to ask and petition on behalf of uh, fellow believers and maybe some non-believers. God, I just pray that your salvation and that the faith that is required for that salvation uh, be sent to all those that would truly call on your name and that would believe in your Son in his sacrifice for their substitution and in the resurrection. God, I just thank you that we'll all be resurrected unto eternal life. So let us start to live without sin now to prepare ourselves for a sinless eternity. And we just thank you, Father God, for that promise of the future of what it is that we all feel in our hearts and souls that it was always meant to be to begin with. We know that you have a higher plan and purpose and that your ways are so far above our ways. I don't even try to understand why about many things anymore. But God, when it's your will for us to understand why, please give us the wisdom it takes um, to be able to, to discern. And in that, God, I just want to lift up uh, Ash and his family now that he's passed. Um, it was pretty tragic passing, and I know that the family and many, many friends are all very, um, they're very wounded by this loss. And, and Father, I don't know Ash's heart as you do, and I don't know his condition in faith, but I know that, um, I know that you're a merciful God, and I just pray that you have mercy on that family and all the friends that are shocked. And let this be a testimony to us all to not waste the time that we have and that if we're not sure about somebody's spiritual condition, let us be the one that brings the gospel to them, at least the opportunity for them to believe. <clears throat> Father God, I also want to lift up Victoria for healing of the body and for cleansing of relationships. And I pray that you strengthen her to continue on in your faith. Father, I want to lift up Paula to encourage her in the spirit and to i just pray that you continue to bless her and her fruitfulness in doing your business father i also want to pray for gordon uh, bless his heart and soul he's been through so much i just pray that you continue to strengthen and hold him in your merciful hands but god today we call on you for his sister's sake uh, rosemary we lift her up right now and we pray for a complete and full healing and restoration for her and we pray for any and all medical practitioners on all levels that they have God's speed and your accuracy, Father, in the spirit of truth, in diagnosing and in treating whatever it is that is illing uh, the bodies of your workers, God. 
I pray for Mike's healing and dealing in the body and relationships. I pray for strength and faith and for answers to his prayers. I also pray that you lift up Alice and Matt right now, Father God. I pray for your continued grace, mercy, and provision for your healing and complete and full restoration of Matt according to your will. God, I know that you know the thoughts that you have towards us all, and the thoughts are of peace, not of evil. But let us, let us receive that peace right now, and I just pray that it washes over us in the Holy Spirit. Father, I want to lift up George, and I just pray for us all to receive what George has asked for himself. I pray for us all to have the discernment the, to be able to discern your still small voice, God. And I pray that you give us all the wisdom to know what your will is. And I pray also, God, for you to still the chaotic waters of our minds to be able to hear your small voice and to be able to act on that wisdom. Father, please give us strength and courage in the spirit to follow your perfect will. I also want to lift up Jill, Father God, for her continued protection, provision, for guidance, for peace, and complete healing. God, I also want to lift up Malov for stability and provision and for peace that surpasses all understanding. God, just touch Malov's heart. I also pray for Mia and all that she's been through. God, you've been there with her the whole time and you've answered our prayers continually. I just thank you for that consistency, and I would ask that if it be your will to continue to answer our prayers for Mia, uh, for endurance for her and everyone involved in helping to continue to do the things necessary to get the healing and dealing and treatment that she needs. Father, I pray for relief in all areas of healing and restoration in Mia's life. I also want to lift up Tina, Janet, and Mike, Father God. I pray. For your mercy and your grace and patience in their lives to be more abundant than ever now i pray for complete healing of janet's lungs and god i would ask that you help tone mike down so that he's more manageable i don't know if that is something that is a, a healing situation but in any in all areas that michael could be healed god i pray that if it's your will it be done in Jesus' name by his blood for your um to exalt you, Father, for your glory. I also want to lift up Amber for uh, to thank you and to ask for your continued favor and protection from the assaults of the enemy in her life and what she's dealing with. And I would also thank you for Moses' uh, salvation, Father God, for helping uh, in the spirit to lead Moses to the Lord after such a long history. And I, I just thank you and I bless you for his salvation, God. Uh, it's truly, truly a miracle. Uh, I also pray for his discernment uh, in his early, or in his uh, spiritually, in his spiritual youth. I pray that he has the discernment and wisdom in leading his boys in Christ. Uh, help him to be the man of God that you've called him to be and help him to be the leader in his family he needs to be, to be an effective um, messenger of your gospel. Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you for all things. And as we're thankful and grateful for what we have, God, we just petition you on behalf of all the saints for all these things that we've asked for, not for any vain glory and not for any you know, vain repetitions of long words, but just for a prayer from the heart of just one of your humble servants, God, that I thank you for just hearing my prayers. And if it is your will, and if it pleases you to answer any of these prayers, God, where two or more are gathered in Jesus' name, he's in the midst, and he says that there's nothing we can't ask for according to your will that will not be given to us. We just ask for your covenant and for your promise and for the inheritance to receive those things as we've asked, and to receive them in due time according to your will. But if it be possible right now, manifest right now for your glory and for his name's sake god we just lift up jesus christ right now as the only worthy one our lord and savior and we just thank you for his blessings and for his sacrifice 
Thank you for being the God of the living and help us to have that life and to live it more abundantly in whatever situation we may find ourselves in, God. Just encourage our souls. Be that strong, be that strong hedge of protection. Go out before us to fight the battles. Let us hold ourselves up inside of you and take refuge instead of inside of the high tower that you are. And let us just continue to watch for his return and to always be ready. Let us be wise and always with our lamps full, God. We just pray for more of your anointing and more of your presence in our life. Um, we pray for your still small voice to speak to us and to make your will be known and, and made manifest in our actions so that we could produce spiritual fruit, God. We just bless your holy name and all these things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right, guys, until next time, it's Timmy signing off. God bless and keep each and every one of you. Thanks for taking the time to read if you are reading those devotionals. And if you haven't, please consider it. Um, thanks for taking the time to listen and watch this video, too. It means a lot to me. I think it means more to God, though. So thank you for giving to the Lord, guys. And until next time, take care. Hey,